All right, welcome everybody. My name is Scott Meyer. This is Drawing Together with Artist Network, where we meet every Wednesday at 3 p.m. Eastern to draw together. I can't be with you live today, so I have this recording, and I hope it will suffice to help you with your, uh, your drawing habit for the week. So each week we choose a new subject because we're trying to grow our skills in particular ways. And in this case, we have this teapot. Uh, so you can follow along, you'll find the reference image in the description below along with a list of the materials I'll be using, but feel free to use whatever materials you would like to. This is all about us simply challenging ourselves so that we continue to grow as artists. So um, I chose this subject to help us um, deal with some, some of the issues around the complexity, right? You know, so it's a relatively simple subject but there are elements to it and aspects to it that are relatively challenging and complex. And in particular, it's those graceful curves in the handle and the spout and the body itself. Um, there are these subtle transitions in value that we'll be managing. Um, and in the, the biggest challenge will be in using tinted charcoal for this. So there's a nice softness to the, the colors here that I thought could be interesting for us to tackle with tinted charcoal. It's something that you all as an audience have been uh, mentioning for the last few weeks, so I thought I'd give it a shot today. So uh, this is the, the preparatory drawing I did to help kind of wrap my head around it. Um, now one of the things is I did is I, I used the uh, DaVinci Eye app that I showed a few episodes back to help lay out the proportions and that allowed me to focus really on color and edges. But today I'm not going to use that and I'm going to walk through some of the tools that I use to help control the proportions and see if we can make it as accurate as possible using these tools. So um, just wanted to kind of throw that out there that it may not look as accurate as this one for that reason. So um, simply those are great tools to use. Uh, when you need them. Um, let's take a look at the materials. So I'll be using this uh, Derwent Extra Large Charcoal. Um, but there's a tinted charcoal set. And I'm going to use this. I believe it's the lavender um, charcoal that here. I don't know if it's in here. Let me spin this around here so you can see it more accurately. So I've got a big block when I need it. I also have this tinted charcoal set. Um, so I have selected from this um, well, five really. So that I've got this, I've got black and I've got white. So I've got a, just a straight charcoal dark. Um, let me see if I can get that, make sure it's in, in view here. Black charcoal and then the white as well. Um, and then I have, what do I have? Mountain blue. So I get some of the cool hues, so some temperature in there with this blue, um, this dark moss. So a little bit of a value, a transition between that blue and then the black. And then I have this glowing embers, which is a more of a warm color, similar in uh, in color to the uh, this lavender large block that I've got. So uh, that's what I'm using for uh, the charcoal. I've got my trusty blending stump. I'll use this one here that I've been using for charcoal um, erasers. I've got I just I grabbed a bunch. I've got I got my kneaded eraser. I've got this vanish eraser. It's a rubber one. Um, this accurate uh, mechanical eraser as well as my kind of go-to which is my Derwent retractable eraser that I have kind of shaved down to give me some control over edges. Um, actually with this mechanical eraser, this accurate one, I can I need to pull out a little bit more eraser there to work with. So that'll be a lot of fun. I hope it'll last. I haven't charged it in a while. It's a USB one and it seems to be going strong. Um, so on a single charge, it seems to last quite a while. So, all right. Uh, I'm hoping this will be a fairly quick one. We'll see. Um, and if you, uh, if you have any questions, again, I can't be with you live, but I'm hoping that I can answer those in the chat below. So feel free to uh, throw out your questions in the chat. I'm going to do my best to review those and answer those in the discussion on YouTube. And you're also going to be able to find a link to artistnetwork.com, the show page for this episode where you can share your work when you're done. So if you're new, that's what this is all about. Pull up the reference image, draw along with us. Share your work when you're done and uh, receive some you know, great encouragement and feedback from this wonderfully supportive community of artists from around the world. So let's get to it. All right, so I'm gonna use this big block. Um, the last few episodes, um, we have been, have been using um, uh, graphite and using a large block to kind of lay out some mass. And my goal right now is to tone the page but I figure I might as well use this as an opportunity to um, start to kind of wrap my head around the form. 
So I'm kind of thinking in terms of positive and negative space here. And in a gesture, kind of simply reacting to the form. If you don't have tinted charcoal, you know, go ahead and use you know, vine charcoal for this, or you know, if you have a block of graphite, if you're, if you're drawing in graphite, you could use um, Again, this isn't about necessarily having to follow along strictly the way I'm drawing, but hopefully it's giving you some ideas um, for you to kind of launch on your own, in your own approach to drawing. So kind of just leaning in on the, the corner of the, this block a little bit to start to give myself some, uh, you know, some more refined marks here. And as I said earlier, this is really more, uh, my, my goal is to tone the page. So I'll actually pull out a paper towel here. Um, and I need to just get material on the page, but it might as well be contributing to the form at the same time. So with this paper towel, I can simply smooth it. I forgot to mention, this is the Somerset rag. Um, it's a cotton rag paper made by a mill in England, I believe. You can find more information about it at um, Legion Paper's website. So I believe it's legionpaper.com. Um, I'll put that link in the description as well. So if, um, as you know, those of you who have been following me for a while, I've been thoroughly enjoying cotton rag papers to draw with. That's kind of my go-to. Um, and in particular, this summer set has been a lot of fun to work with. Um, so there's you know all sorts of different types, um, different you know companies that make them and you know different mills different qualities to them and i guess it's worth it to kind of explore experiment with different ideas so i, I was intentional about leaving some of the the white here especially in the center what i did in the earlier uh, in this preparatory drawing is i just toned the whole page evenly um, and then it was a, a bit of a challenge to pull the the bright highlight out which is fine. You can always just tone everything else down in the drawing if you would, if you're looking for a stronger highlight. But um, in this case, I thought, well, what would happen if I um, if I kind of intentionally leave a, a little bit more of the white showing in the area where I I can kind, of, kind of anticipate where the um, where the light highlights might be. Um, come just wipe off a little bit extra of the the charcoal residue. I don't know if it's picking up the, the color quite as well. Um, there's, there's more of a kind of a pink quality to this uh, in, from my direct observation. In the camera, it's kind of flattening it out a little bit. I'll see if I can color correct it a little bit. But so there's a, there's a warmth to it that I like here. All right, so um, now I'm gonna work through the basic proportions here. Um, and I'm gonna use my my blending stump to help me. And now the, one of the advantages to this blending stump is that it's been well used. So it's pretty well loaded with, with charcoal. So as you can see, I can make these marks. Um, you, you might find it helpful to use um, vine charcoal in this stage, something that's light and allows you to um, kind of experiment with the marks a little bit. You know, that's something that we talk about in this show is that kind of our goal in this whole process of drawing is to come to an, evol a, a, an understanding of the subject through an evolution of our observations and through the drawing process itself. So um, we, as we, you know, come to know the, the subject, our drawing will improve and our drawing will help us better understand the subject. So they feed one another um, and if you're working with charcoal, one of the things that can be challenging is in that it can make somewhat permanent marks. And so a light charcoal on these early layers can be helpful because it provides a bit of a barrier for some more compressed charcoal later. So vine charcoal is a, is a wonderful option early on uh, because it helps to, it helps to um, prepare the surface a little bit for, for the more kind of permanent marks of, uh, the, of the compressed charcoal. 
And so I, at this point, it's really just a gesture that I'm, I'm kind of reacting to the form, kind of keeping my eyes focused on the, the small image, the reference image, uh, and trying to re simply react to the form, keeping an eye out in my periphery of what's happening on the page. So I can see in front of me what you're seeing on the screen. I have the overhead camera. Uh, I have the, the reference image next to it. And, and, I, and ideally, if you're working from life, that's really the best scenario for you. And ideally, you'd be able to um, have the image and the subject adjacent to your drawing. And so you can kind of see them side by side. And uh, at, this, at this stage, it's helpful to try to you know, really conceive of this form as as an abstract shape more than really identifying it as a teapot, if that makes sense. So um, again, I'm just kind of working around the form, establishing marks, because as, um, as we gather information about the subject, these marks are going to move. They're going to shift and settle into place. Uh, and, but I want to try to give myself some sort of overview of, of the the challenges that we might face. Okay, so now we can start to go through and correct. Now that we have everything really roughly established, let's go through and, and adjust. And I, I, one of the reasons I chose to use this blending stump to establish my marks is that it's, it, like I said, it creates these lighter marks. Because I ultimately want to get rid of those lines in as many places as possible, and then use a contour line selectively to reinforce that form. Um, you know, you uh, as an artist are going to determine for yourself how much line you want to use. Uh, you know, perhaps as a stylistic choice where you want to have a heavy line to indicate the contour of the form, or perhaps it's a stylistic choice to eliminate that line altogether. I'm going to have be somewhere in the middle, and I'm going to kind of feel that out to figure out well, where where does a, an elegant line make sense, and does it enhance the form, and where can I get away without a line, or where do I want to break that edge so that there's a very little indication of the edge at all. Um, so again, with this form established, we can start to correct. And so I'm going to start by using angle sighting. That's kind of my go-to for the first part of a correction. So what that means is that I'm just comparing the angles of the reference or the subject. If you're working from life or you're working from a photograph, you're trying to break that down into a sequence of, of straight lines and then transfer those observations onto your drawing. The easiest way to do that is to simply close one eye so that you flatten your depth perception and use a tool, or your, a pencil, a blending stump, and align it with the angle that you're targeting in the subject. Um, and it's just laying it directly on top over, it, over your, in your vision over the subject to try to establish a basic angle. In this case, I'm looking for this angle here. I'm not worried about capturing that curve. I'm worried about capturing that basic angle, and then we'll find the curve within that. Uh, and I can do that with this as well. That seems to be working out pretty well. Um, it can indicate the top there, and we might have to adjust it. Um, but if I, if I were to extend some of these angles down now, I can see where it intersects that spout and compare that to the reference photo. So then this might come down a little bit. Now, one thing I'm observing as I get to this reference photo is that in this edge, it, it's, it gets very diffuse. It's a, it's a kind of a lost edge there where the light of the spout blend in with that background. So I'm just kind of putting, making a mental note about that. I'm trying to evaluate the width here and in this case, um, what I think what I, what I want to do is kind of establish this angle, connecting this part, the lip of that, that opening, and find that angle that would run through the tip of the spout there. And that puts that, what I'm seeing is an angle, something like this, puts the tip of the spout right about there. And now I can kind of cut across and I can compare the tip of the spout to this bend here, that point of contact. It looks like it's a little bit lower. So I can drop that down a little bit. So 
And, and I, I find it helpful to, when, when confronted with the, these elegant, 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 elegant contour lines, to think about them as short straight marks first, to find those basic angles and then find the curve within it. Um, and that's going to be particularly relevant with this curve here where you have this compound curve. So I want to make sure that first I get this angle correct. Um, and so I'm going to try to find the average angle based on the, the reference and then compare that to my drawing. And I think I need to kind of tuck this in a little bit, create a steeper angle and then that point of contact here, I can compare directly above to see where that aligns with this top part. So that's a plumb line that I'm envisioning here. And so if I've established this basic angle here, then you can start to break it apart into uh, you know, three basic angles. So you have one that originates from the base, one that runs up the length, and then one that makes the turn at the end. And then from there, we can break that down even farther. But in this way, you're thinking about those curves as specific dimensions and angles uh, so that you can really identify that specific form. Because once you observe it as kind of an S shape, then you, we are challenged by that, that S form. We, wanna, it, it, we end up making kind of generic S shapes out of that rather than really specific curves. And so I'm kind of just moving my way across the bottom of the drawing, trying or of the of the pot here, just trying to find that form. And one of the things we can um, uh, kind of observe in this reference is the the difference in the angle between this top opening here, that's an ellipse, and as we come down here, there's also an ellipse at the bottom of the teapot. Um, this being lower, that ellipse is going to be a little bit more open. It's going to be a bit more rounded. As we work up to eye level, that ellipse squishes even farther into a, essentially a horizontal line. And that's, this is one of the areas where I, look, looking at this, I exaggerated that curve a bit too much. I feel like I, it would be stronger to make this more horizontal. So I'm kind of learning from that previous mistake or previous kind of decision and uh, hopefully going to make something that is a, a bit more accurate here. Um, so just kind of giving myself some notes here about that, that shadow that forms the lip there. Um, now I can worry about this transition up here. So again, I'm going to take the basic angle I think this cuts in a little bit more. We come up along this lip here. And now I wanna, I wanna really visualize how, what this transition is. Where does this lid originate relative to this mark here? There's a bit of a stagger. It's not a continual line through there. This comes up just a little bit. Find the general angle. I think I kind of bumped it up too much. I'm going to move it up to the right too far, so I need to bring that over a little bit. Um, and now I can start to tackle the basic form of the handle. Now the handle trips up a lot of people, including myself, <laughs> because it's such a complex form, right? It's, you know, it's one kind of swoop here, but there are kind of multiple qualities to it. So we want to try to get that, that overall kind of C shape here, um, but there's, it, there's a flatness to it. It's not a cylinder, it, but it's rounded, but it's also, there's kind of a flat quality so that there's, there's a front facing edge here and then we turn sharply across more of a horizontal plane here. And as we wrap around in perspective, that top upper plane gets lost behind the band here. So then as we, as we come around, we are transitioning our view from seeing that top side of that band um, to now the underside of it that comes out here. Um, and 
So what we want to avoid is creating a situation where we are just creating parallel lines that wrap through here. We're really trying to create specific marks that indicate that form. Um, now there's a lot of value in tackling a subject like this because um, it helps prepare us for some complex forms like figures where compound curves uh, drawn in, in, in a very specific way can deliver a lot more information than um, than they might otherwise. And so if you look at an artist like uh, Degas, his drawings, um, he's a master of working with line and using a contour line, a contour edge, in a very particular way where you can really see the musculature, the bones, the structure of the figure in the scene. And that all comes about because there's a, a, a sensitivity to these subtle interactions between these compound curves. And so uh, practicing with a subject like this helps you prepare for um, many other subjects, including the human figure. Um, so a few other things that I'm using to help with this is I'm now looking at the negative space in here, um, as well as the um, as as well as the angle sighting and some kind of comparative measuring. So I'm kind of just getting a feel. Does it does it feel generally correct? Um, how does this look compared to this? I think I might need to make that, that handle a little bit wider. I think I generally got the shape of that negative space correct. One thing I notice is, is right in here, it really cuts in right at the top. It hooks under, and then you have this line that cuts in on top. It's kind of like a, like a human ear, that, that form in a way. So right in here is a really particular, uh, particularly delicate uh, place for you to, to pay extra attention. All right, so I'm pretty happy with this overall layout here. I think I want to kind of indicate this, uh, this attachment point of the handle to the, I mean, uh, the, the spout to the, the main body. Um, and as I do that, I want to be mindful of the fact that there's kind of a spherical quality to this, um, it, but it's not just kind of an, an ellipse at that point of contact. You know, we've got two forms that are merging together, so we have kind of a cylinder here and a sphere, um, and there's a kind of the high point of the rounded part of the spout is right about here. And so if we were really study that, that, um, that joint right there, you get this really interesting, somewhat of an S curve, but it doesn't really, doesn't really curve back under here. It kind of comes back under like this to kind of transition into the, the outer edge of the spout. Um, so like I said, this is, we're, we're talking a lot about complexity here. It's a relatively simple object. It's just a simple teapot. You know, there's no, no real embellishments to it, but there's a lot of complexity uh, in the in the form here that um, becomes a bit of a challenge to address. So uh, I'm going to yeah, bring out this eraser, draw a little bit with it. I try to indicate that the handle there at the top. I can use this to kind of round out that form. Of eliminate some of those lines. And then if we're happy with the overall proportions, um, I can go through and start refining. It's a, you know, we're moving along pretty quickly here. And then here with this, I'm looking at the shape of that light, leaving a little bit of space at the, in the, in the spout there to, um, for that, for that hole there where there's a shadow. So just a gentle touch in here, trying to get rid of some of those background lines, the same with right in here. Really just blending with the eraser more than anything. Kind of replacing that dark line with the light mark here. All right, so.
So now I really emphasize that the outer dimension of the, the band of the, um, the handle there, but now I'm going to kind of lift off some of the light there on the top. So you're doing some positive and negative drawing. So I'm, as I'm working on that handle, I'm also refining the shape of the, the lip there, the lid. Um, all right, now, now as I'm analyzing the form, I'm seeing a disconnect in the symmetry here. Um, so I want to first. I want to make sure I placed the the handle there and the lid in the center. So I'm going to find the center of the lid there. Indicate that with my finger. Bring this edge here to to align with the edge of the lid. And now reverse that. It's pretty close. So I might have some adjustments to make. Maybe bring this in just a little bit. And now I may bring out the tinted charcoal here, and I think what I want to do is darken that background. There's, you know, right in here, the shadow of the lid is darker than the background, but the background is darker than the light here. So I, I have a little bit of room to maneuver in, with regards to value, or I can go a little bit darker in that background. So just using the side of this tinted charcoal pencil, kind of building up a broad area. kind of putting a little bit more emphasis on the space around the contour. And then, so I'm going to kind of move back and forth from the space above it, above that edge. And kind of then leading into that edge to sharpen it up a little bit. So what I'm what what what's dangerous right now is that I have these marks here paralleling the, that edge. If I emphasize these marks too much, it's going to confuse the viewer. It's going to flatten the depth because the viewer is going to look at those marks and say, "Well, if they're running in the same direction as the edge of the cup, they must belong together." So they're going to try to connect them together in their minds. If you're looking to create some additional visual separation between your elements then you want to create some contrast in the direction of your marks relative to the direction of the form, if that makes sense. So if you've got, an, if you've got a slope running this way on that edge, I, you can see I change the direction of my marks so that they run contrary to that. Now, this is it's getting a bit kind of um, blotchy here. So one of the things that can be tricky with some of these um, tinted charcoals is that they can be a little bit harder um, and they can scratch a little bit. So you just got to be a little bit delicate. So in this case, I have a blotch here, I have a blotch here, it's a light in here. So what I can do now is target that light area with these kind of circular marks and that helps to fill it in. And if you encounter kind of a, a scratchy part in the charcoal, just continue to rotate your your pencil and that will help to kind of smooth it all out. Now in the reference photo it gets light here so I can create a bit of a transition and the gradation there because then yeah, we can bring in a little bit of a line right in here. Um, but uh, getting back to the lid that was my focus so I need to kind of come back to that And now I'm going to work on creating a more symmetrical arrangement here. So I've got a, a line that I've drawn in there, but I want to be careful with that. Um, I want this to be a shape right now. And now in this background, connect these dark areas together. And when I'm working with this tinted charcoal, I'm just I'm starting with really a light touch, and that's true with most drawing materials. I start with a light touch to see what marks it makes simply with its own weight. 
and then apply greater pressure as I, as I evaluate what's happening. And so I'm holding the pencil fairly far back, which allows me to utilize the side of the pencil a bit more. And it gives me greater control over the pressure because I can just simply let it float on the page. And as, as I lean in, as I roll my hand, it applies pressure to the, the tip of the pencil. So now I'm kind of back to this, just evaluating that edge. And I just want to make sure that there's no real halos around that edge, that it, um, it reads you know, fairly even in terms of the, the tone. But I do want to round this out a little bit. So I'm going to grab a sharper eraser. Sharpen that edge a little bit. And again, just evaluating the symmetry across the top. And so you might find it helpful to kind of work left and right sides together to keep that symmetry in check. And that's true with a lot of tricky symmetrical objects. If you're like drawing a, a vase or a guitar or something like that, um, it can be um, helpful to kind of work bilaterally, work across the form that way. Uh, so we've got to continue. We've got to get some dark background here. Just taking a look at the reference again. I feel like this can come up a little bit. So I'll work back and forth with the, the eraser and then the, the charcoal. So as I find that edge, it's a really delicate mark. Again, I'm, I don't want that line to be heavy. Um, and then I feel like I can flatten this out a little bit here. So there's a kind of a sculptural quality to this process where you're, you're subtracting, you're adding, and you're kind of carving the form out on the page. And I, now I really need to be using the camera's view because that's more direct on my photo, I mean on my drawing here. So I need to be relying on that rather than relying on my direct observation here because of the, the slanted tabletop my, my for the perspective. So if you haven't done so already, it's a really good idea to step back from your work, set it up vertically so you can evaluate how the perspective is, is coming together for you. And again, I like this paper because there's a softness to it. I can get crisp edges, but it, um, there is also kind of a, an atmospheric quality that is, you know, that, that you can achieve using rag papers. That's something I just really enjoy. And I, I'm feeling like this is the subject where we can see that um, more, more clearly. All right, so I don't know, I'm still feeling a little bit uh, unsure about the symmetry across the top here. So I, I'm gonna kind of keep coming back to that. Um, sometimes, sometimes your brain just needs time to chew on, a, on a, an issue. So that symmetry is one that I'm gonna probably keep coming back to, but what can sometimes happen is that as you work on other parts of the drawing, information is delivered and and it can help to identify other um, elements in the drawing. So if I don't really know what I need to do with the, the symmetry of the lid at this point, that's all right. I can kind of let my brain chew on that a little bit and then come back to it. And, and hopefully then by the time I've gathered more information, I've completed more of the drawing, it'll become clear what's off on that lid. Or maybe there's nothing. Maybe it just looks off because the rest of the drawing is unfinished. So, you know, drawing is, is such a, it's so much about relativity. We talk about that in 
when working with value and color that we never interpret a, a value in isolation. It's always a relationship between, uh, between them. And so, you know, what, what might look dark at one stage of the drawing may look light as darker values are placed next to it. Um, and what might look incorrect in terms of their proportions might look more correct later as more elements kind of fall into place. I'm going to smooth this out here. So I'm losing that form a little bit of the, the handle, but that's all right. I'm just trying to smooth out the background. So, so, much, so far, we've done more drawing on the background than anything. Um, but in, it's in that negative space that the, um, the teapot form is emerging. Um, so I'm just going to use this kneaded eraser to kind of tap out some of the blotches here. Just try to help create a smoother transition there. And using the kind of the, the palm of my hand to help smooth things out. So if you're if you're struggling with smooth transitions in your charcoal um, or your graphite, just you know my my general principle is just increase the layers. Lots of light layers, build it up, wipe it down, um, and and just keep just keep tackling it. And so I'm observing in here that I'm going to end up going darker, but I feel like that's the right value for now. Um, and I'm going to come in here and actually work on a tone. Actually, I don't think I want to use that. I want to use that color. I want to switch, switch uh, charcoals here. So I intentionally chose a, a kind of warm and cool complements. Um, you know, warm being, you know, more leaning towards red and orange, cool being kind of leaning more towards blue. Color temperature is an interesting thing, uh, but it's all about a, again about a relationship between them. So again, from my perspective on the screen, this doesn't look very kind of lavender, but in person it is more so. So I'll, I'll see if I can correct that. I do think I want to add a little bit of this lavender in here to kind of suggest that there's some bounce light happening that is catching some of the color that's naturally in the environment here. But I think already we have some of that being built up on the page. So let me switch now to the mountain blue. Um, and, and in that, um, we can establish uh, some of the cool shadow um, values here. It's just tricky talking about terms, talking in terms of color, um, because there are, you know, there are kind of specific, um, specific terms like tone and value, um, and in this case, it's, you know, when we're we're thinking about it in terms of that, in terms of light and dark, but we also have the the element of temperature. Um, but the hue is not really a, a key term here. Hue defines the color itself, you know, if it's red, yellow, orange, etc. cetera. Um, whereas value in a color determines how light or dark that is. And in this case, it's largely a value-based drawing. Um, but there is also a, a kind of a temperature shift. And so I'm kind of just kind of contrasting uh, some of the uh, some of the darker values that are going to be cooler with some of the mid-tones uh, where there's a bit more warmth. So I could switch back to this warmer one. See how that plays out. And now as I'm getting into this the center form here, becoming aware of the, um, the shadow and, and the subtlety in that shadow a little bit more. I'm going to come back to that in a little bit and drop that on there for now. Come back to this because here in the handle is where you really see that blue um, become 
clearer, it's darker, and it's cooler. And I'm kind of letting this edge become a bit ambiguous, bringing sharpness to the form right under here. So right where it tucks in under that handle there, going a little bit darker, kind of softening out. And as we come down this edge, it becomes more visible. And I don't know if I have enough value. I don't know if this blue can get me dark enough. So I may have to come back in with that black. And I don't know if we can, hopefully we can see the, the color effectively on YouTube. Again, it's all very subtle, so we'll just do what we can. And then I'll contrast that by adding a little bit of, of a warm and a darker line in along here. As we come back into this form, soften that edge, but I want to sharpen up in here. Um, and then there's this, uh, there's a bit of a kind of a reflected shadow in here. I want to make that cool with the blue. But what I think I might need to do is right now here, there's a, a nice contrast where that light from the handle um, is in contrast to that darker part of the shadow. So I need to establish that. And then I can come back in on top of that to sharpen that up. All right, so moving over in this direction here. Let me see. I can reestablish the light. First, so I'm going to erase this out here. Kind of bring a little bit of sharpness in on the, the tip. And then kind of give it a little bit of dimension in here. Um, now this, what happens right in here with that lip is really challenging to see. And I don't want to make something clear and explicit if I don't really understand what's happening. So I'm just going to let that, um, just going to let that sit for now. I'm going to bring in a little bit of coolness on the lid here where it falls into shadow, kind of identify, identify that, that edge a little bit. I'm going to keep this warm, but it, it's interesting how that, that shadow seems to shift into in temperature, getting a little bit cooler along that, this edge here. And I've been working from the small thumbnail this whole time. Uh, you might find it helpful to have a larger scale version of this reference to work from. Um, but I, so far, I haven't really needed that for, for this. This is really an interesting shadow form in here that we'll have to have to manage. So I'm going to, this is going to take multiple passes. So I'm going to go with this cool kind of transition first. And I think we'll have to darken it a little bit later with a layer of, of a warmer, darker um, charcoal. And then what I'm observing now is like the importance of that dark band of wood there to provide some contrast. And so right in here, I'll drop that in. It looks like it intersects the handle right at about there. 
And as I'm doing this, I'm becoming aware of the fact that you know my tonal range is very limited at this point. I'm not getting very dark. I make sure that that's more horizontal. It's making everything feel tilted. I'm just gonna go that that halo along that edge is really bothering me, so I'm gonna try to clarify that, make a smoother transition in there. And then that's gonna get really dark. Um, now let me see, I think it feels like there's a bit of a temperature shift in here, maybe a little bit cooler. So now uh, what I'm observing is that there's a Hot spot here, a high, you know, the, like where the highlight is more intense. So right in here at the kind of the apex of the belly, and then right in here where there's a where it starts to turn into the lip, there's a highlight here along the edge, and then right in here. So what I can do is kind of let some tone build up across the whole drawing. You know, so if I can observe a highlight that that's an indicator that the areas around it are a little bit darker in value. And, and, and sometimes you know, I kind of have to remind myself of that because when I'm looking at a, a white object like this, it, uh, my, my tendency is just to leave too much of the white of the page showing. So I need to be open to going darker in value than I might otherwise feel. So. Um, This little this splotch right here is starting to bug me because it's right where that highlight is supposed to go. So I can visualize that highlight there. And now I, I know it's going to get lost. I'm going to, it's all going <laughs> to get, um, get smudged over at some point. So um, that's okay. And there's a highlight here, kind of rolling up the, the, the high point of the that the belly of that spout. And there's right in here I'll have to give this a little bit more dimension right now. It's fairly flat. Uh, so when working with the eraser there's a lot of pressure control that comes into play, you know, just like we were saying earlier about, you know, being kind of gentle with that initial pass with the, with the charcoal. Um, I'm being equally gentle with the, with the eraser because, you know, so just kind of playing around with the, just the effects of, of, of it, its own weight on the paper. Um, and then if I need more kind of leaning in on that a bit more, so. All right, so I think at this point, you, know, you can see that subtle shift in value here that allows that highlight to take on a greater, um, greater dimension, greater contrast there. Uh, so that's really helpful. Now I think I need to go darker. Let's see, I've got this dark moss. So that under here in particular, it gets, it gets pretty dark. Um, and I can add some of the dark wood over here with this dark moss. It's kind of a greenish quality. Kind of working symmetrically across so that there feels like a, a continuity between those, you know, it, it, in the break between the, um, the different parts of the, this dark band here. Again, this is it's a it's called dark moss, but it's not a very dark value. You know, none of these tinted charcoals really have a, a significant amount of depth in terms of tone. But that's not really what they're designed for. They're designed to kind of 
tint things. So need to just want to double. I also need to make sure. So this paper is a little bit tilted relative to the edge of this this board, and that was kind of throwing me off. So I need to make sure that I'm not relying on the edge of this board to to render these lines too much. I'm going to switch back to the, the warm tone that I have here. Just kind of build up that tone. I've kind of lost the edge of the bottom edge of that teapot. That's okay because we're going to come back in with a darker shadow. It's a very soft edge. We don't want to we don't we don't want to create a sharp transition. So I'm just kind of creating this these mid-tone transitions of the, the base of the, uh, the teapot. Now if we come back in with the charcoal, um, that, can, that can help to sharpen things up a little bit. So I'm gonna kind of move this out of the way. I got too much stuff building up. So I'm gonna start with kind of a broad Mark along here because it's not a not a very large area in which we're applying this this dark this black charcoal um, and so I, but I, I'm trying to sneak up on it a little bit so kind of create a, a more broad area and then sharpen it up in just a few select areas um, within that band of dark. There's a bit of a bit of a shadow under here. So now, now that we have this area of a darker value, it helps to provide a little bit more context to the values that we had established before. It kind of pulls pulls the whole contrast up. Uh, I think I want to and enhance the line work a little bit on this area. So we talked earlier about this being a, um, an opportunity to explore a kind of nuanced line uh, and, and you are each going to find your own balance and what that means. You know, whether you want to have any line work at all to represent the contour or if you want to have, you know, significantly more line work. Um, so as I'm working through, I'm thinking about kind of shading, but I'm, my emphasis now is on the edges. I need to, uh, I need a little bit more, um, uh, more value here in the in the spout. And there's, it's a darker shadow in here, so I'm going to drop that down, allowing some of the blue that was there to show through, but. I think I want to increase the warmth in along there. And as we come up here, I think I want to draw attention to the spout by bringing a bit of a line right in there, bringing a bit of a curve back in here to represent the inside of that edge. But otherwise, letting that be more implied than anything. And so that was that's kind of my take on it, but I may kind of evaluate that again, based on how everything else is playing out in the drawing. Now, so as I'm looking at this, this shadow, it's really a tricky form. Um, and I'm trying to figure out what, how how far out to kind of feather those the shadow. Um, I think I need to shift to a warmer tone right in here. I feel like it just is a bit more substantive that that shadow transition than what I was giving it before. And I can notice in the reference it's more of a yellow kind of quality as it's, as there's bounce light 
interacting with that form. Um, so you might use a kind of a yellow um, tinted charcoal for that. All right, so now, you know, we're, we're close to being done. Um, I'm gonna work on this shadow a little bit more, um, mostly to actually sharpen this charcoal. So I'm using the side of the charcoal right now. And that helps to refine that sharp point. And drop in a little bit of, uh, a little bit more texture here in this, this background wood. So again, using this overhand grip because I want to um, I want to refine the tip. I'm going to be using that a bit more. All right, there's a bit of a band here. And we're just over here. I kind of had lost some of I lost there's a light strip here that kind of comes through, so I needed to pick that back up. Um, all right, so as I'm working around the contour now, I'm just going to look at that value relationship. I think I can, you know, darken this, for example, uh, just being careful. I'm, I'm you know, being a little dangerous here running these vertically like this, but um, it, they I seem to be losing the directionality of the marks sufficiently so that it's not flattening that, that out. Um, All right, so as we come through, I'm just going to look for areas where I feel like I can sharpen up a little bit more, bring a little bit more contrast, like right in there. Um, like this edge becomes more visible, in part because in the reference photo, that gets darker. But I wonder if I can kind of capture that edge more through the use of that line than anything. And so there's a, a kind of a quality of just kind of feeling it out at this stage. As, you're, as you look at the, at the reference photo, you kind of glance at it with the intention of trying to define what edges appear to you. Like, where, do you, where is your eye drawn to naturally? Um, and, and that may, it may be different. Like, you know, I could, if I, were to, if I were to do this again, I may choose different areas along that contour to emphasize. Um, that's kind of part of what is in, kind of inherent in just this experience today. Um, and you may choose to emphasize a different aspect of these, these elements. Like right in here, I think I want to emphasize this kind of crook in the, in the neck there. And then I think this, this top along here needs to be sharpened up here. I feel like I just flattened that out. I didn't quite didn't quite hit that curve. Now that's a bit too chunky of a line, so I'm gonna you know, uh, kind of refine that a little bit with the eraser. So I, again, I'm, I'm kind of starting from the perspective of having a limited um, definition of the edge and then gradually bring in the line where I want to pull, pull a little bit more emphasis. Right in here, I feel like I could bring a little bit more to that curve. I could darken this shadow in here, but I think I want to use the lavender for this. There's just I, have an I don't. This doesn't have to get very dark, so here's an opportunity where I can to kind of prioritize the tone a little bit. Make sure that edge is soft, and that transition to the lip. Uh, it's darker, darker right up along this edge. 
um, and now I can observe, you know, in this shadow, there's kind of a darker shadow core, and then there's another kind of layer of transparency here. So there's a, kind of a lighter value, and then a darker transparent overlay here of this shadow. I'm gonna let that be a little bit light to help create a sense of that volume. And then define that top a little bit more. I think I emphasized that top a bit more than the reference photo indicates, but I kind of like it, so I'm gonna leave it. Um, again, you may, you may emphasize something different I notice there's a bit of a highlight right here. I think I can lift a little bit more tone here. So just doing some drawing with the eraser to give a little bit more form. So I hope you're doing well with your drawing. I think we're, we're pretty close to being done here. I don't know how much more I can really provide. As I work around these edges, I'm trying to, if anything, I want the brightest brights to be in the center of the form. So as I'm working with the eraser to sharpen up some of these edges, it's a fairly light pressure so that it's just kind of sharpening those edges without lifting up too much material. Um, and then if I need to lift up more, like right in here, I can really bear down And there's, again, I kind of lost some of the tone here in this highlight. There's a highlight right in here. There's a nice highlight right in here. I'm going to use this kneaded eraser to create nice soft edges in the center of that form. So the brightest bright right here in that center. And if you want to increase that contrast, you can just darken the rest of the, the body there. Now there are a few areas here, like, like I, right, in, right in here, I kind of lost that angle a bit. See how that see how that plays out. You can kind of massage it a little bit. I don't know if there's much I can do that's really going to make a, a substantive impact on this drawing at this at this stage. But you can continue to to work the form again, bring bringing greater emphasis to the areas that stand out to you. Um, you know, if I can if I bring in more of a line here, for example, it brings that that lip and the, the spout out a little bit more, but I left that back lip really soft to help create that sense of volume. Um, and so you, in this way, you just kind of keep picking your way through the drawing, emphasizing you know, certain areas based on you know, how things are reading to you and what stands out to you in the reference. Um, so, I think I'm going to call it a day. Like I said, I don't know as if there's a lot more I can do to this that's going to make it substantively different, but I think we covered a lot of ground. I hope you enjoyed this. We'll be back again live next week with another subject. So again, join us 3 p.m. Eastern every Wednesday to draw together a new subject every week to help us improve our skills in particular ways. So thank you again. This was a lot of fun. Check out these tinted charcoals and see what that color can do for you.